Hi, this is Salman Alana in Manos Brilakis, and this is case 219 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. It was a case of an instant CTO that involved a bifurcation. The patient had previous coronary bypass, but his grafts were occluded except for the patent lima. He presented with significant angina and was found to have normal ejection fraction. This is the array of view. There is a CTO of the right coronary artery with uh, ambiguous proximal cap. There are some bridging collaterals, diffusely diseased distal vessel. And there is also a circumflex CTO also, also within a previously placed stance. Our initial plan was to attempt to recanalize the right coronary artery CTO that seemed to be a slightly larger territory. It was an ambiguous proximal cap, length of 30 millimeters, disease distal vessel, and epicardial collaterals. Given the ambiguity, we decided to first start with a primary retrograde approach, followed by undergrade wiring if we could clarify the ambiguity, followed by undergrade dissection and reentry. So we started to perform surfing through the first septal, see on black, through or three but there was no much progress. We did a contrast injection to clarify the course of the collateral. And then we tried again, but uh, the guide wire was actually going outside the coronary. So we were unable to cross retrograde. And then we decided to do undergrade. We used the guide extension, AL1 guide, and then multiple projections tried to advance along the course of the vessel. This is a guy on X2. Orthogonal views. And although it is, does seem to go in the right direction, um, the patient did have significant chest discomfort and ST segment depressions, likely because of a compromise of the flow into this marginal branch. So what to do next? Our plan changed, and given the EKG changes, we decided to actually instead approach the circumflex CTO. This was an instant CTO. There was occlusion within a bifurcation. We were not aware of what was the previous technique that was used for the bifurcation standing. So we have um, EBU guide. Uh, we have a Corsair microcatheter and a guy next to guide wire. And that actually did make good progress past the instant occlusion. And then we switched for a Gladius Mongo. And using the Gladius Mongo, we're able to advance it all the way into the distal vessel. Unfortunately, the microcatheter would not cross, so we had a, a essentially a balloon or microcatheter uncrossable occlusion. The first step for this is to use a small balloon and using a 1.5 millimeter tacker along with the side branch anchor in the septal branch in the LAD, we were able to advance the tacker across that uncrossable area and perform balloon dilation. There was some uh, under expansion of the balloon, but after that we were able to deliver our microcatheter and then exchange uh, the Gladius Mongo for a workhorse guide wire. However, we still had not advanced a wire through the distal circumflex that was a significant branch and had a previous stand. We used a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter along with the Gaia second guide wire and tried to follow the course of the vessel as outlined by the previous stand. We did have some difficulty but eventually were able to advance it. However, when we perform an injection, we see that the wire actually has exited and is now outside the coronary artery. What to do next? We remove the Gaia wire and instead advance the, another Gladius Mongo guide wire that actually seemed to advance along the course of the vessel, and this was confirmed by ipsilateral injection. We then did inflations with a 1.0 millimeter sapphire balloon. It was fairly hard getting it down. We still had to use the side branch anchoring technique. But then after doing that, we have the other problem. We could not advance a balloon again into the first obtuse marginal. So complex interactions, there were likely some stent struts from the bifurcation standing that were disrupted and were causing difficulty. And eventually, after trying multiple balloons, we ended up using laser. And following that, once again, with a 1.5 millimeter Takeru balloon, we were able to advance it across into the obtuse marginal branch. So balloons in both branches, kissing balloon inflation, and this is our result. And this was a pivotal point 
because the question here is we do have previous stands do we put balloons and potentially stage it for using drug coated balloons or use off label peripheral drug coated balloons or do we do brachytherapy or do we bring the um, patient back or do we actually put a stent into this um, first obtuse marginal branch and the eventual decision was to actually place the stent because we thought there were some areas of dissection just immediately distal to the stent so we were able to deliver with difficulty a and by using a guide extension a 2.5 by 48 millimeter synergy stand. We did jail a wire into the distal circumflex. And then we deployed the synergy, seemed to expand well. And that did provide a decent result in the obtuse marginal, but unfortunately, we now lost the distal circumflex. So the downside of standing at the bifurcation is you may lose the side branch, especially if they have been previously placed stands. We thought that rewiring could happen with a dual loom microcatheter, and we tried quite a bit, but unfortunately we could not get the wire down. We then switched for a Corsair, and then we were able to advance a Gaia second wire down into the distal circumflex, and then did again kissing balloon inflation, so that did restore undergrade flow into the distal circumflex. Again, more kissing balloon inflations. What we see here is that the ostium or the proximal portion of the distal circumflex past the first obtuse marginal branch had a significant stenosis is under expansion. So we performed lithotripsy with a 2.5 millimeter balloon and did repeat kissing balloon inflation and now we do have much better expansion of the balloon in the distal circumflex. And this is the result. At this point, we were satisfied with the result in the circumflex. Not perfect, but we do have Timothy flow in both the first obtuse marginal and the distal circumflex, which is a large vessel. However, there's something else here that caught our attention, and it is right over here. So we do have a dissection in the proximal LAD. And even though the patient has a patent lima further down, still this is applying a fairly large septal branch. So we were able to wire through that uh, vessel, and um, you can see here the dissection is there. And then we did place uh, a stand into the LAD, covering that area of dissection. And this is the final result. We do have Timothy flow into the circumflex. There is still residual disease in the proximal circumflex that might require some treatment in the future. But at this point, this was a fairly long and complicated case, and we did not want to place any additional stands. There are multiple lessons from this case. The first one is the potential flexibility in selecting the target vessel. In this patient, we did have both an RCA and a circumflex CTO. And although we initially tried to open the RCA, because of the EKG changes, we decided to actually switch to the circumflex, which ended up being successful without having any hemodynamic changes. So now if the patient continues to have symptoms, going back to the right may be safer because we have good perfusion of the lateral wall. Second, the importance of strong support. We had to use a guide extension. We have to use also a side branch anchor technique for delivering equipment into the circumflex. For balloon uncrossable lesions, we did use the Takeru balloon with a side branch anchoring, and that was actually very good in crossing through that uncrossable segment. We did have a previously standard bifurcation, and now standing one branch resulted in occlusion of the other branch. So whenever we stand through a bifurcation that has already been standard, there is maybe an increased risk of compromising the flow in the side branch. An interesting phenomenon here, we tried to rewire into the side branch after we placed the stand into the OM1, which we call the main vessel. And it was very difficult through a dual lumen, but it was successful using a single lumen. So sometimes, paradoxically, the dual lumen may not be beneficial for wiring to the side branch, and the single lumen might work better instead. And then we did have a complication dissection in the LAD that we treated with standing. And overall, this case shows the importance of persistence. We had multiple challenges, both with wire crossing, with microcatheter and balloon crossing. We have to use multiple techniques to overcome that, wiring the side branch. But eventually, we were successful in recanalizing uh, both uh, the OM1 and the distal circumflex and achieve a nice final result. Thank you.